Hello and welcome everyone to the December Green Campus update where I'm going to be going through some of the very exciting developments uh, following on from the crowdfunding campaign and launch of Green Campus. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who's supported. We've raised over £10,000 and had about another £10,000 invested in the company, which has really given us what we need to, to carry on. I've taken out a loan. I've got some printers coming from China, which will print painfully slowly, but we're going to be able to now start printing something. I'm doing all this so I can be transparent about what's happening with the money. And also I'd like to share this with all the kids out there who I don't get to spend enough time with. So you can uh, find out all about what's been, been going on and keeping us busy. I'm very lucky to be able to work with Misha Teasdale who runs Green Pop in South Africa. We're, we're trying to bring their reforestation festival over to the UK. I'll tell you a bit more about that later. But Misha shared with me a quote from a book that, that he was reading called Blessed Unrest by Paul Hawking. In the book, Paul says, if you look at the science about what's happening on the earth right now and you aren't pessimistic, you don't understand the data. But if you meet the people who are working to restore the earth and the lives of all the poor and you aren't optimistic, you haven't got a pulse. <laughs> so I really hope that what I can do here is share some of the good news about the amazing greenies out there. So this update is going to be broken into different sections. First of all, there's going to be a top level global update. Secondly, there's going to be a technical update, which really deep dives into the details of the 3D printing technologies that we're working to develop and, and, and build. We're also going to look at the prototype manufacture processes and also the materials development processes also testing different biocomposites that we're working with then there'll be a community update where we start to look at the different lands that have been offered to us to build green camps around the world we've had the most beautiful people coming from all around the world saying check it out i got this amazing piece of land let's do a green campus together so i'm going to introduce all of those different opportunities in the hope that you guys can stay with us on this journey and we can deploy green campuses all over this beautiful universe and grow food forests and meditate, learn the Dharma, teach everyone really deep ecological literacy. Create an inspiring example of the culture of compassion. That's the whole idea. Okay, lastly, there's going to be a Q&A session where I'm going to go through some of the frequently asked questions in the different comment sections of the articles that have been published for plant-based news and on forums on Facebook and Instagram and other places like that online. For the top level update, I'm very happy to say that we raised over £10,000 in pledges on the crowdfunding campaign. So thank you so, so much to everyone who's donated, pre-ordered night stays or bought some organic jumpers or any of the other rewards that we were offering. I'm also happy to say that we raised about £10,000, maybe 20 in the form of investments, selling percentage shares in the company. This isn't quite the 25 grand that I need to buy all the equipment and rent a space to set up a dedicated large format industrial printer. I, I've invested already in the extruder and a couple of other components that we need. In the meantime, I've taken a loan out from the UK government and I bought a very affordable 3D printers from China that are about 60% the size we need to print our panels for the Green Camp system. But these are unbelievably slow it takes two days to print one panel rather than two hours if, if we had this fitted onto a really heavy duty xyz gantry or robot arm i'm going to go into more detail and in all of that in the technical section so in the meantime in order to keep raising more and more money i'm keeping the crowdfunding campaign open and we're going to be hosting some fundraising events so that we can keep putting money in the kitty so we can hook this bad boy up to a serious XYZ gantry or a serious robot arm and make the printing of the Green Camp system, this basic life support set of modular, compatible, interoperable sub-assemblies, um, we can make that as economically and simply available to people as possible. The fundraising events that we're going to be hosting are, first of all, monthly Dharma Weekend build parties which we'll be having down here at the prototype site in the south of England. Now, because of COVID, this is only going to be restricted to our really core team members to start off with. We'll be printing with the very slow printers from China, one panel every two days, but we'll put those together and start 
sharing with you how the prototyping is going. We'll also be doing our best within present restrictions to create and develop the Dharma Weekend model with lots of vegan, amazing vegan food, vegan fitness on the, on the beach, meditation classes, yoga classes in the first structures that we're building, dancing, music, speakers, stuff like that. And as COVID restrictions lighten up, we're gonna be opening that more and more to the public. And these domes actually create, as a private accommodation unit, actually a, a very simple to keep sterile environment where people are socially isolated, at least for the most intimate parts of one's day. We will be sharing updates from our monthly events and we invite you to pre-order stays for future events. We've got rollback dates kind of programmed in if we're unable to come together. Please visit create.green slash program slash dharma hyphen weekend and we'll let you know as soon as that's available for the public to join. Otherwise you can follow the blog feed there about construction progress and things like that. We're also keeping tuned into COVID restrictions with rollback dates in place for our first yoga teacher training. It's going to be a 23 day residential yoga retreat with the amazing Yoga Linda uh, Yoga School from Barcelona. So that when our first camps are up, we're going to be able to deliver yoga teacher training. We've got our first course earmarked for April, which is ambitious. If not, it's going to roll back until September and the idea is that when you come to the course you've got four yoga experts each in a different discipline anatomy or the various different uh, strands of yoga which will be able to help you to start your own career as a yoga teacher and present the different sort of specializations that you can go down within that career. Our hope is that thereby we can generate a really stable and flexible strong energy at Green Camp and Hopefully we have then a group of yoga teachers who will be able to teach at green camps around the world and keep spreading that strong, stable, flexible energy. So if you want to find out more um, and book on, you can see create.green slash program slash YTT 200. That's short for Yoga Teacher Training 200. Okay, another regenerative fundraising vehicle that we're working on and developing is an online reforestation festival. We're working on the on the ground reforestation festivals, but because of COVID, we can't really have festivals now. So Green Pops Tree EO, Misha Teasdale, is doing his amazing reforestation festivals in South Africa. And our green team member, Robin Collings, who builds, he's a producer of Glastonbury and Boomtown Festival. He's been really nurturing and uh, helping incubate Green Campus with his lovely warm energy. I introduced Ro Misha to Robin saying, why don't we do reforestation festivals? Robin was like, well, mate, we can't do festivals now because of COVID, but Robin doesn't sit around. He's developed this online festival environment where it's like a computer game. You're running around this virtual festival with your avatar and you see on the stage your favorite artist DJing away or performing away. They capture them in volumetric 3D, sort of cinematic real 3D characters and you can see your favorite artist. I propose, why don't we do an online reforestation festival? We did a pitch for Denzel Fiegelson who set up iTunes, who's always just been there with his amazing lovely energy helping good things to happen he was there with steve jobs developing itunes which was where the ipod and the iphone and apple music festival came out of that denzel stills runs i think his label platoon has all these wonderful artists uh, i think robin said that a lot of them were coming out of africa they seem to be from all over from what i could see but like just amazing talent and and presenting it in a beautiful way anyway i said to, to denzel why don't we get a button on the iTunes store that says come and see your favorite artists at an online festival environment using Robin's online festival platform and ticket sales go towards reforestation festivals, well, reforestation and ecosystem restoration around the world. Misha was like, yeah, man, that's great. It turns out Green Pop is an official implementation partner of the United Nations Decade on Restoration, which is starting in, in January next year. So the UN Decade on Restoration is a response to what all the United Nations climate scientists are saying, that the best response that we have to come back from the big civilization busting climate crises we face, desertification, deforestation, drought, 
food shortages, uh, ocean collapse, ocean acidification, not to mention climate change, that the climate going crazy and all of these storms going up like crazy, the rate of extinction going off the chart. Um, the United Nations scientists say that the best solutions that we have are nature-based solutions, restoring ecosystems that naturally provide oxygen, which is useful. Oxygen levels are dropping out, especially around cities all over the planet. That sequest moisture into the ground, that stop the desertification, that grow more forests. So the idea is that we have these online reforestation festivals, put the button on iTunes and people can see their favorite artists, have a good old jam. We can even have on the ground reforestation festivals where people know their ticket sales are creating reforestation programs there they can take part of, but also supporting all the other United Nations implementation partners who are, who are restoring ecosystems all around the world, not just forests, but pampas and marshlands and all the other areas which provide us with that's where we came from that's where life comes from and we can't survive without it so Denzel was really positive in his support he's up to something now uh, really big apparently but when he's got a bit more time next year we're gonna hopefully keep petitioning to get that button up on a really high profile place and maybe a little sliver can go into helping green camps become part of these restoration uh, ecosystem restoration camps Okay, so those are the, the, the fundraising vehicles and, and projects that I'm going to be continuing to, to develop and host so that we can keep raising funds to build proper 3D printers that can take big extruders like this and print a panel in two hours rather than two days, which is where we're at right now. But at least we're somewhere. We're getting somewhere, which is good. If you want to learn more about that, check out create.green forward slash program forward slash green hyphen pop. Those guys are the node and we're doing all we can to follow their amazing example. They're really leading the way. Once again, Africa supplying the wealth to the world. I love it. Another very important top level update is about how there's been an amazing response from some of the world's most amazing 3D printing engineers and architects, really technically qualified people who are just top of their field, who've come forwards to offer their help with Green Campus. And our mission, I'm going to introduce these people in the community section where we introduce the, the lands that they come from in the hope to establish these characters in the context of the ecosystems and communities that they're guardians of and hopefully we'll have green camps there so you know where to go and visit them and join in with that sort of maker space that we're, we're trying to uh, franchise. So now it's time for the technical update. And because we didn't reach our fundraising targets to build these big 3D printers that can print panels really quickly, I took a loan out from the UK government and I bought what I could afford is these 3D printers from China. They're very affordable and they're amazing. They're doing the absolute pushing the limit of what's possible with the technology at that scale. The pros of these 3D printers is that we are able to start printing something. It may take two days for a panel, but at least there's a panel there. I can show people printed out of these materials that we can build structures, we can see what they're like inside and we can start to get feedback and optimizing them. A lot of people wanna see that this is possible and come down to this prototype site. So thank you very much guys for giving us this at 6,000 pounds a printer is pretty much unbeatable for the size. It's about 60, 70% of what we need. This also means that we're gonna be able to print a, a row of panels so I can set this panel to print and come back in a week and I'll have a row of panels. I won't have to reset it after each panel. Insha'Allah, that, that's, that's what's happening. It's also an XYZ gantry printer, which is standard technology in 3D printing, just like a desktop 3D printer, but very much larger. This means that the slicing software that you use to create the print file is standard, like Cura, kind of amazing, powerful, free software. Also, the firmware that runs the printer is Marlin, and this can be monitored with laptops and all of this is really standard 3D printing technology. So anyone with a basic technical interest will be able to emulate what we're doing and we can set people up with these 3D printers. That's great, apart from the fact that it's painfully slow. One panel in two days just really is not a business case. We want one panel in two hours, as I keep saying. The last real big pro is that it's cheap. For £6,000 to get a printer means that, you know, we could get a fleet of printers printing together and still we don't touch doing it properly with industrial machinery so the cons are that these printers are painfully slow as i mentioned and because they're smaller it means that 
if, if I want to print one panel like this, which is about two and a half meters or a bit less, I'm going to have to break it down into smaller chunks like this. But as I say, at least we're able to start printing something. But the problem with that is, is it makes it a little bit structurally less sound. It makes more opportunity for leaks. It makes it more difficult to clean, it takes longer to put up and takes longer to put down. That's what we're working with. That's the best we've been able to afford. So we're going to go for it. That is one of the cons of working with smaller platforms, however. This is all very good for our proof of concept stage. Another problem with these low cost 3D printers is that they use spools of filament rather than pellets. So this is a biomaterial mixed with recycled plastic, which fits into a normal fused deposition modeling 3D printer. What we want to do is feed them with these granules these pellets are 10 times cheaper than, the, than these filaments. So really it's a no brainer. We wanna be printing with a pellet extruder like this one. Anyway, if, if I can't manage to raise the funds, I've bought this filament extruding kit, which will allow us to take our pellets, feed it into here. This will extrude and start to wind up our own filament. Another painfully slow process, but hey, we're gonna try and prove this concept as much as possible. I'm waiting to turn that machine on until I hear back from our material suppliers and also the people who made these machines. Massive Dimension and Philobot, I think they're brother and sister companies or sister companies, they um, have gotten in contact saying that they'd like to develop this project with us. They really are making some of the best extruders uh, at the best prices on the market. So that's very exciting development. Hopefully they can maybe even help us get access to a, a very large format XYZ gantry platform. I've been in touch with all the biggest XYZ gantry platforms in the world, trying to cost up building a 3D printer. I've been in touch with all the top robotic arm 3D printing companies in the world, trying to cost up building a 3D printer. And I've got all those different plans kind of on the table and I've got what is the most economical and what I think is the most accessible for people as our options. I'm gonna wait till we do the testing with the Chinese panels and speak to these guys in detail, speak with some of the other 3D printing experts before we decide to, we also need to raise a bit more money before we decide exactly where we invest. So Philobot, who make this filament extruder, are the sister company of Massive Dimension who make this pellet extruder but this is a large industrial scale one. These filament extruders tend to be for more domestic scale production. Not to say that people aren't using them, feeding loads of filament into one extruder like a AI build. It's a really amazing solution they've got, but because a ton of this is one euro a kilogram and it costs about 10 euros a kilogram for filament, why don't we save 90% of our costs and, and, and try and go straight to this platform? So I'm in talks with those guys. They're interested in, in doing some kind of a collaboration together. Fortunately, they approached us and said, why don't we collaborate? So I'm really hoping that we can get down on the drawing board and work out what is the ultimate, ex ultimate platform for 3D printing in terms of output as productive as possible and as simple as possible and as low cost as possible so that we can start building them in garages all over. The robotic arms are difficult to, to set up. They're difficult to operate and they need a huge space. You know, I can't fit it inside this kind of room. Also, if I send back this filament extruder, I save 5,000 pounds, which can go towards building the either the big XYZ gantry or the robotic arm. So look forward to next month updating you on where we're at with our choice for the industrial scale 3D printing platform. It's all very much a work in progress. Speaking of materials, I'm very happy to say that our sponsors, UPM, the largest paper company in the world, who, who make one of the two main groups of materials that we're working with, one of three actually, they have offered us a biomaterial reinforced with diamond that's already rolled into, into filament rolls so that we can work with these low cost Chinese printers to start printing our first prototype panels. This, this diamond reinforcement means that the first panels will be as strong as possible, like 4,000 MPA stiffness. It 
it's really an amazing opportunity. It's not the greenest material, but if they're just sitting there not being used, it's, it's a surplus from some experiments they were carrying out. Well, it's just being wasted anyway. So I'm, I, I'm really grateful to UPM. Our first domes are going to be made out of diamonds, <laughs> which is also great. With the, the money that people have donated, I'm also going to be able to buy some more of this sycamine material, which is 80% bio-based. It's definitely not completely free of toxic bonding agents, but we'll be pouring that into frames that we print to create the transparent panels. So I've purchased all of this with the money from the loan that I've taken out. And the idea is that I can do all the proof of concept work with this loan and I'm taking the risk. And then we can use the money that we raise through our crowdfunder campaign now, through investments if you'd like to invest and you haven't already, but also through our upcoming fundraising initiatives that I've mentioned so that we can build the green manufacture system, this industrial scale 3D printer, uh, with the money from that sort of crowdfunding effort. Please stay tuned as we keep you updated with the design and honing in on exactly what the best platform is. As I say, it's kind of a toss up between a big robotic arm printer, which we can do for 25 grand, plus all the costs of building a dedicated space, which is a big industrial space, or an XYZ gantry printer, which I've got quotes for around 30,000 pounds, which we could build even in a space like this in a garage, which is kind of where I'm leaning towards some of the experts I'm talking to say we should do both which would be ideal if we had that kind of money anyway stay tuned I'll keep you up to date with all the testing and uh, look forward to showing you the first structures and the first panels we're printing on the build party on the 15th of January next month and at future build parties all over the world okay I think it should be really reiterated the difference like this extruder from massive dimension is incredibly heavy that's the kind of thing that you need if you're going to print massive beads like this and start making this is a 3d printed panel start making some really sturdy structural components this is in stark contrast to the 3d printing extruders on small on the small chinese printer that we have for example that it weighs only a, a few hundred grams so in order to mount an extruder like this that can print a few kilograms an hour or we can print their next generation which prints about 10 kilograms an hour we need a really large xyz gantry or a robotic arm another con with the robotic arms is that those things are massive and they can move at about two meters a second which can kill someone if that's gone out of control for some reason something i would really try and avoid i want to make this technology as domestic as possible if you can install and operate a washing machine then you could use one of these it'd be really great to domesticate them at that level supply people with designs to print all the eco furnishings that they need for compost bins and worm farms and stuff at home okay so that's all for the technical development for now let me rather show you it actual stuff that we printed at scale i'm really looking forward to that so uh Thanks everyone for your support getting us getting us there. Please do keep pre-ordering night stay at the different green camps that are up online. They're only prospective now, but hopefully with your pre-orders, we'll be able to build them. Wherever you pre-order a night at a green camp, that's your vote saying, I want a green camp built there. There's also a little form you can click and fill out saying, I want you to build a green camp here. And this is my land. And, and then you can get all your friends to pre-order night stays there. And with the funds we raise, we're going to build the camps in order of their popularity, really try and keep it as democratic among our members as possible. There are some discounts that are available now in terms of night stay and membership and access to our programs that will run out soon. So please try and get those because those are lifetime discounts. OK, so now it's time for the community segment where I'm going to introduce some of the green team updates and introduce some of the amazing people who come forwards with land for new green campuses all around the world. Firstly, I'd just like to announce, first community announcement is recently I posted a job uh, for a COO, a chief operations officer on vegan jobs. And I've been talking to a few different people who've applied there. 
Someone came forward offering to hire a chief operations officer for Green Campus so that they can help manage with bookings, help managing with accounting and all the back end kind of stuff which Green Campus needs and so that we can start getting an office going, working through the hundreds of tasks on the Green Campus backlog, really focused on logistics and, uh, and marketing and, uh, and making this work basically helping me rather than doing it all myself ha having someone there who's full-time to help out please have a look in the description of the video for a link to the job listing that goes through all of the requirements that we we've kind of set out for for the position and if you or anyone you know might be interested please do apply we'd love to hear from you one task that i'd really like help with that i've made some headway on but don't really have time to look after as much as it deserves is a ministerial facing conference at Parliament. I met with Caroline Lucas while she was picketing for her seat as MP of the Green Party in Brighton, which she won, saying, how are we getting on developing a carbon tax? She said she hasn't really heard of it. Everyone's too focused on, on Brexit. And so we wrote to Patrick Holden at the Sustainable Food Trust about hosting a a ministerial facing conference where we talk to all the ministers about carbon taxes and, and how that can work. It's a bit of a no-brainer really. You tax people according to their social and environmental footprint. And Patrick Holden at the Sustainable Food Trust had previously hosted conferences at the Royal Geographical Society where they were looking at true cost accounting doing an environmental and social audit of a company where the world's leading professional services and accounting companies were there talking about ways that they could start to assess a social and environmental footprint for organizations. Because when you look at it, a hamburger should cost 90 pounds when you include all of the subsidies that go into a hamburger and all of the externalities or things that are paid for with our tax money to clean up after those forms of agriculture. Whereas, you know, a veggie burger should cost four pounds or whatever it does at the moment because less than four percent of all subsidies go into fruit and vegetable production so if we start to pay the true cost well we tax organizations according to this social and environmental footprint or we start displaying the true cost for each product that's there uh, mandatorily or even voluntarily then we're going to be able to start generating huge revenues and we've got loads of huge industrial organizations that would volunteer to be able to pay these taxes because we're gonna use those revenues to pay dividends to people whose environmental and social footprint is positive. And we've got organizations, massive industrial groups who want their steel to be green and they want to pay these taxes so that they can advertise their steel as green. There's a huge goodwill from, from big organizations now who really wanna use their power for good, but they're specialized in steel production. They don't know about reforestation, but the groups who do know about reforestation can sign up to these projects and they can be uh, paid the dividends because their social and environmental footprints are so green. So that's something I'd love help to, to keep nurturing and, and um, uh, pecking into being. It's mostly just annoying people to keep their meeting slots. And our role here is really just as secretaries trying to organize these meetings with the experts to be able to present to the ministers, present different models. Everyone's focused on Brexit and COVID right now, understandably, but we've got we, we, we to use our elbows uh, to stay in the game, I think. So uh, CEO, we need you. I, I blow the conch. Um, assemble. Another update, I'm very grateful to introduce David Morgan, who's based here in the UK, has approached us with his business plans that he had very similarly suggesting luxury eco camping sites. He did a lot of work on that and he says he'd just love to get involved. He's a full stack developer, developing sort of portals for businesses to interface with their clients and David and I have agreed to work together developing a community portal for Green Campus so that means that members who signed up for Green Campus either for a free account or for a paid subscription account they'll be able to see in real time uh, how their contributions are adding up and what that represents as a share of the company. These profile pages are up now for team members where you can see blog posts, programs that team members involved with products that team members got on the green store green camps which that team members involved with david's going to help us to make that available to all green campus members so we all have our 
our, our profiles. This is going to be built using Webflow, MemberStack, Zapier, QuickBooks, and Airtable. So it's a kind of a no-code environment, which allows for like really quite simple fungibility. So this community portal, which gives you a profile and records all of your contributions, the nights you stay, the programs you attend, the programs you host for our team members, their share options will be worked out using this this, uh, well, they'll be recorded using these, these platforms. These contributions are gonna be how we work out and weight uh, how many votes you have as a member when we're making group decisions. Also, how, how many shares you have when we're working out how to do our community shareholding model. The idea is then that the more that you come and contribute at Green Campus uh, to the regeneration of the different lands that we're, we're working on, or that as a company eventually we want to be buying those lands, putting them into a vegan community land trust. And the more you come and you help out at reforestation festivals, the more you come meditate, the more you come host your yoga teacher trainings or your yoga classes there, the more you actually earn a share in these lands that you're regenerating. So you're creating real assets for yourself in regenerating the land. I think that's really key is creating a, a, a permission-based system like that, otherwise called a capitalist system, but essentially I just see it as it now how we work out permissions. The long-term goal is for Green Campus to buy some land with our member-owned vegan community land trust. We then deploy a Green Campus there to regenerate consciousness community, environment, and cooperative economy. And then we, re we reward the Green Campus members who actually come to the site and contribute to this regeneration with a share in this trust, with a shareholding. This community portal will then monitor the contributions made by team members and the transactions they their booking nights, stays and things. For now, I'm very grateful to welcome David on board to work uh, on us building this system uh, for the green team members first. And if we're successful in working together, we're both interested in developing a role for David as a IT director or some kind of a director uh, of that sort uh, with share options in the company for directing Green Campus forwards in this regard and telling us what to do to make it really successful in these areas he's an expert in. Okay, now, Okay, so let's start to have a look at all of the beautiful locations that people have come forwards with around the world, looking at opportunities, first of all, that I feel are the best next places to be building green camps based on how close they are to us here, how successful we feel a camp would be there, and also financial reasons sometimes people are offering us cold hard cash to go and build a green camp with them. Also, they're very beautiful, wonderful places and people that have a lot of good reasons to be doing it. So here we go. Let's introduce the locations. First of all, we've got this amazing site in Devon. It's called Pond Field outside of Totnes. There's another field nearby. This is a community project called the Living Project, started by the youth of Totnes. Who I was with them one time when they went to the Houses of Parliament to say, hey, government, please can we have some land so that we can live naturally, build natural structures, grow beautiful community gardens to support us here. You know, all the second homes that rich people from London come and build in Devon mean that they can't afford to live in housing. So they just wanted to live in a really natural way. These guys who are in this community are just the most beautiful beings. It's a really, it's a really spiritual place Totnes in Devon it's got a lot of eco-education uh, organizations and businesses around the place the surfing these guys are the most beautiful surfers they helped me to organize parties which we would raise the money to buy wood which we built they helped me cut the the wood to build our first domes in the first green campus the forest garden at Arundel where I proved this business model we were making a couple of grand a weekend on Airbnb and these boys would just amazing at just looking after the dream and looking after me so if there's any way that i can quit set them up with a 3d printer give them the design so they can print their own structures work on they'll be printing amazing speaker designs and surfboards and uh, uh, compost bins and all kinds of amazing things so these guys really helped me to set up the first green campus and they've got their project really really way ahead down there beautiful gardens are established they've got um, sweat lodge events happening all the time, building uh, structures for schools to, to come and use the spaces. And th they're sympathetic to the ideas and, and, and 
cautiously exploring the ideas of setting a green campus up with us. So I really hope that I can create a model that will support their project there. They've got the pond field site. They've also got another site where people are living really close to nature, big old wood fired jacuzzis and, and, and a lot of really healthy regenerative programs going on there. So, so that's my first choice. It's only down the water here. We could sail some, sail some panels down to them. So number two on the list is the Wazing Estate near Reading in the UK. It's a beautiful estate owned by this guy called Josh and he's got a team of people who, who run it with him. They run a, a beautiful festival there called Medicine Festival where they invite all the tribes from around the world that are helping teach um, about how to live in harmony with nature. It's really just one of the most beautiful gatherings that uh, my friends have ever been to and have organized. They say, Josh kindly showed me an area of disused industrial land that has got a, a woodland already kind of reclaiming it. He said he was open to ideas for creating a, a green campus there that can help to restore the environment, a little food forest idea. His CEO was keen to see the structures that's beholden to us to build some prototype structures, invite them down, and hopefully the next steps will be that we can build some green camps among their bell tent camping area that already has 100% occupancy and I think is more expensive a night to stay in a bell tent than it is to stay in, well, the proposed price for people to stay in one of our green camp structures, which we hope will be a lot more comfortable and cozier for families to stay in for great trips in nature. Also, I think important to mention that John Ross, who's working with 3D printing architect Arthur uh, Malmu Mani and his architecture company, They've also been looking at the site and coming up with concepts. We've been trying to find ways to cooperate and they felt they wanted to buy a camp off of us, but that's not really our model. Our business model is to, uh, is as a franchise, set up a camp with people and operate it with them and give them a revenue share. Essentially, we want to be in a position where we can build a camp for free for landowners in exchange for access to the land and maybe an opportunity to, to buy it or become a shareholder in it at a later date so our members can have a share in that land for coming there and making it into a little vegan Eden. Anyway, those guys are very, very patiently and kindly moonlighting us as we develop this model. I should also say that it's a potential site to bring Robin along with his Tonka toys to do some landscaping there and host an actual on the ground reforestation festival. Maybe Denzel and Robin can invite some of their amazing artists and we can have a good old jam and plant some food forests. The Agroforestry Research Trust, again down in Devon near Totnes, have Martin Crawford who runs that always kindly and supportively has said that he'd be very happy to help us with the overarching design and consultation of the design for the site and supplying us with all of the species matrix for an edible forest garden or an overyielding polyculture for the site, which is amazing. We hope to be hosting his, his online forest gardening course on the website soon. Okay, number four is a beautiful site in Cyprus owned by an inspiring woman called Dalit. We had a, a very te teary meeting on Skype where we kind of found very kindred spirits and she's committed to having a green campus on this beautiful area of land she has on the western end of Cyprus. A huge area overlooking a beautiful lake and the sea. She's like, says so got a budget, 20, 30 grand to build a camp there anyway. She wants to do it with us. So I hope that we can create prototypes here, develop a 3D printing system and equip her with a 3D printer for 20 or 30 grand. We get an XYZ, I mean, it costs 20 or 30 grand to build one of these XYZ gantry printers. If we can get this Chinese printer so that it can, I mean, it's only six grand and it, if we can make it just half as, uh, take half as long, it takes one day to print a panel. In seven days, you can print a couple of zone fours, you know, in, in two weeks, you can print one of these structures. Okay, that means that, you know, you can have a couple of these in a month, you know, one of these in, in three quarters of a month. If we can get that cheap 3D printer printing quickly, then we can equip people like Delit with a 3D printer, supply the materials, teach them how to make their own materials, supply the designs, and then this green camp in Cyprus can become a node that's producing panels for other green camps in the area. There's the Moria refugee camp in Greece, quite a long way to the northwest. 
There's Beirut not too far away. If we can set a model that works there, we can maybe set up some other Green Camp nodes producing panels so that when there's disasters, as there's constantly in the region because of war, we can supply temporary shelter or, or the, these forms of emergency shelter that are low cost and comfortable for, for projects in that region. It's, it's a stable base to be able to work from in a, in a politically safe community. So uh, delete. Uh, if, I'm, I'm doing my best so that we can try and make it add up to, to build a stru some structures there. We, we've got to do it here first. Okay, so in Tuscany, there's a couple of estates where there's an opportunity to build. I have permission from one of them, Asher Community in Southern Tuscany. And that's really a wonderful community that's built around the kind of Ubud community in Bali or Findhorn community in Scotland, which is to say that it's a very loose but purposeful community where people are kind of organized by invitation and example that they're setting there. Those communities are exploring the creation of a mini village between 12 and 20 dwellings, probably starting off with it. There was, there's an interest to build a sort of 100 to 200 square meter central event space together. And they're already bringing people up into the, into the locality, renting and selling dwellings in and around the community. They won't get their planning permissions and, and zoning until July, but they've got about 25,000 square feet above the ground and 18,000 square feet below the ground. Anthony's the, one of the founders of the organization. His, his main work is with a company called alchemyofbreath.com. They're doing breath work, which really helps reduce the symptoms associated with anxiety, depression, insomnia, PTSD, and ADD. I'm signing up. Anthony and Asher have uh, got Michael Piasecki who's moved in. He's one of the world's top 3D printing engineers, artists. His furniture designs are in the top laboratories around the world, design laboratories. He is just really one of the top guys. I'm very lucky to have spoken to him a couple of times already with Anthony and I really want him to join the team to, and, and offer him share options for helping us develop a 3D platform specifically for printing through the Green Camp system, helping us to work out, are we going robot arms? Are we going XYZ gantries? And if so, let's try and make that as an accessible and simple to use platform and as cheap as possible so that we can you know, upscale this. So those guys are keen to develop, uh, to start off with a kind of community space. And we're looking at how we can do that together. We're going to speak again in the new year. And uh, thanks guys for being there. Next on the list is in Barcelona. My friend Lily's helping us find land in and around Barcelona. We're looking at disused urban spaces, ruins up in the national parks and any other land. I'm a big fan of Barcelona and it's a narco-syndicalist past. Politically, there's a, a, a lot of sensitivity to serious democracy, like really organizing things incredibly democratic. This is in parallel to efforts I have with the Gemeinde of Graubünden in Switzerland, the government, the local government in Graubünden, about setting up a summer camp when the, when the snows melt and doing meditation programs. I'd like to do them in the winter around the Davos World Economic Forum and get everyone meditating, but that's all quite pie in the sky right now. But I do meet with them and I have some of their planning application documents, but it's quite an expensive process to go through. A lovely young chap named Dan came forwards and said that he's working with the Chinese government, bringing forth Western companies with top level PhDs like Martin and Eve on our team or Sunesh, our CFO, who's helped us develop the fin financial model for Green Campus and trying to bring them over to China to set up a company, to set up a Chinese node of their company. So in our case, it was like, why don't you come to China, set up Green Campus China, where you can, the, the Chinese government then will fund you to build your 3D printers out there and build your first camps out there. And they'll give you enough money so that you can support development of your company back in the UK. Principally, I'm afraid of getting thrown in jail for not being able to keep my mouth shut in China whenever I see some of the infuriating injustices that are inflicted upon the people. One does have to keep quiet or one is unable to operate, such as, you know, being unable to send a video file over because the Great Firewall is so intense that the Chinese people are really kept very much in the dark about what's going on elsewhere. I do genuinely worry that I would either make life difficult for myself or someone else. So... 
Dan is going to do the application and is happy to be in charge of the operation. Eve and Eve has already partners in China who are testing and developing their materials, who are 3D printing with their materials. So we would have organizations that we could partner with to set up a node out there. I'm going to leave it to Dan to deal with the Chinese authorities. I don't feel that the right approach if you're dealing with tyrants is to completely disengage. I feel the right approach is to build a green camp and invite them to a meditation retreat and share the Dharma with them, share a purely scientific way that we can understand the causes of suffering and the way out of suffering. And have an amazing reforestation festival where we all plant delicious food forests. Dan has got a friend in Vietnam who has a beachside resort who's apparently also interested. And a node like that in Chengdu province would allow us to supply the panels for, for, for Vietnam and a few other sites in China where they are trying to create new green example. And, and I do commend the Chinese government on things that it's done like a 50% reduction in the production and consumption of livestock. They're trying to shut down the wet markets and things and they're responding aggressively to stop animal agriculture, which is the most ubiquitously destructive activity that humans engage in. It's the main driver of deforestation and biodiversity loss, as I'm sure you already know. My friends Karen and Kim, with who I'm involved trading hemp and things, have some friends in, in Cornwall that they've mentioned that they would be interested in trying to set up a, a green camp with them. I'm adding that on the list, definitely. They're all like master seafarers who Kim is in the med rescuing migrants who are trying to escape from the slave auctions in Libya and doing their best to stop whole families drowning with his civilian fleet of rescue vehicles, purely volunteer basis. Tarin is looking after me with, with these hemp deals where we're doing our best to try and bring medicines to people who need them. Those guys have been doing it for a long while. Uh, so they're definitely on the list. And uh, uh, Kim and Eric, who bought a boat next to theirs down in, in Peacehaven, um, hopefully will be doing the uh, Mexican, uh, organic vegan Mexican cuisine for the build parties, which is very exciting. Anyway, lots of deliciousness we hope to keep uh, co-creating with in the future. So then there's my Kuan Yin brother, Charles Crowther, and his Smoky Greens vegan restaurant in Berlin. He wants some green camp structures or some really cool large green camp structure for his outdoor eating area at his restaurant in Berlin. His business is booming even through lockdown. It's been growing exponentially as all other vegan businesses are around the planet. It's the fastest growing business sector on the planet. New entry in at number seven, Luke Levine in Portugal is also running around the capital and some of the surf towns up to the north of that on the coast, looking for sites to build a green campus, brandishing the green campus business plan in the face of the agents there, assuring them and the, any open-hearted individual who, who's keen to uh, set up profitable eco B&Bs down there and start to regenerate some landscapes where we can have some success stories, sites that really could do with uh, a bit of love uh, and a bit of moisture retention so uh, he's going to keep us posted at how he's going down there. Next, I've got my friend Max, who has land uh, near a university in Chicago in the USA. I did the Eco Village design curriculum with Max in Findhorn up in Scotland. And we actually, as part of the Eco Village design curriculum, you design a green business and you pitch it to your to your fellow participants on the course. and. It's a bit like a green dragon's den with the green dragons. They, everyone has a, some money and, and, and people love the idea of green campus. That was our business. And Max was like, hey, why don't we do one there? Definitely keeping Max on the list. He's the loveliest, most peaceful dude. He's also not too far away from my dear friend, Joey, who's a Dharma brother. He's you know building skyscrapers and converting old factories into super luxury incubators for young uh, creative businesses. Joey, I think, is overcoming a, uh, uh, <laughs> well, Trump lost, and I don't think they can take it. I don't think he's quite overcome. Positive thinking and the projection, the shadow projection mostly. Uh, so <laughs> communications are a little bumpy, but I, I, I feel like we'll be friends forever, and uh, this is just a little bump in the road. Anyway, Joey's staying on the list of the uh, 
green campus, Chicago, and uh, hopefully if he's still bitter about stuff, he can come to Max's for a meditate and we'll bless him out and, and help him get in touch with the, uh, the stillness behind everything and, and what really matters, looking after each other, man, not just looking after ourselves. So yeah, I, I'm pretty confident that won't be a biggie. That'll happen in not too long a time. So Joey, we love you. Okay. Casey Darlow reached, recently reached out. He's got a few million square feet of greenhouses outside San Francisco. He was in touch about collaboration, building a green camp there. Like some of the other landowners who are interested in green campus, they're gonna be watching our prototyping process here. And I think they wanna see that this is real and it works. And we're gonna be sending them update videos like this saying, dude, it's happening. Let's grow some food forests in San Francisco. Uh, there's some gentle people there. Eric and his wife that I mentioned earlier, they own an amazing vegan organic uh, Mexican uh, food company in Brighton doing the most delicious food. Their business is booming there. They meant, Eric mentioned that he had some land in Mexico. He just mentioned it in passing, but you can be sure that I'm adding uh, yummy vegan Mexican sites to the list of potential places. As I mentioned, Eric's gonna be at the bill parties, keeping it super delish and uh, uh, hopefully we can, we can firm things up. My friend Karen Ellis, who I went to university with in Cape Town, runs a, a vegan permaculture school in Montana. He's got some amazing models on his land there for buying and protecting the woodland, creating value for the woodland as a, uh, uh, rather than chopping it all down as this old growth is freely available for people to come buy and chop down, basically. He's now creating models to preserve the, the woodland there. So I'd love to keep showing him what we're up to and keeping in touch, which is difficult when someone's in the middle of the woods a few thousand miles away. But it's just, I love you, Karen. I should have put you higher up the list. It's difficult, but you just, just, you know, call me. And you'll go up 10 places. Okay, so not necessarily in order, but I've long been wanting to do something with my friends just across the water in Guernsey. My, my dear friend Mark Wynn organizes the TED Talks down in Guernsey. He organizes a whole load of community events about trying to make Guernsey the greenest place in the world. He's working with Jock, who runs Soil.gg, a project that hopes to train farmers in how they can switch from industrial methods of agriculture using MPK, industrial phosphorus, potassium, nitrates, herbicides, fungicides, larvicides to produce their crops. He hopes to teach them how to convert to organic methods of agriculture with, with, with compost teas and other organic techniques that keep healthy crops pest free, but increase yields. And because it's organic has a higher value. So increasing the yields, increasing the value, turning it organic, thereby increasing the biodiversity, the soil sequestration of carbon, saving our asses basically. So I have long fantasized about and been flirting with them both, trying to turn them onto the idea of building a green camp together so that we can fly with a Lilium, a vertical takeoff and landing electric jet. Farmers from around France, UK, Spain, to Guernsey, blow their minds on the way there on an electric jet with a sodium glass battery from Professor Goodenough who invented the infolithium battery. He's just created a completely non-toxic battery with a much higher energy density. Land those electric jets, train them in these organic forms of agriculture that are higher yielding and more profitable. Add, add a soil campus there. Mark has a site with all these old greenhouses, which is a sort of incubator for green projects. And, and that's something that I would like to continue to try and and nurture as a concept to work on together. Yeah, that's my hope. There's some lovely people down there and they do amazing festivals. And if I don't keep offending them, maybe they will keep talking to me. I hope they will accept my apology for being so rude in my previous conversations. I, I, I do love them. I'm just trying to keep this all as, as safe as possible, perhaps overprotectively. But I do hope that we can continue to keep things going. I also hope that I'm not too ambitious in wishing that our green camp structures may provide dry, warm, elegant, affordable, and really low impact accommodation 
that can be set up in the lands around where my teacher Bergs and his amazing community host meditation retreats. They, they set up these retreats and these beautiful estates and summer camps where they're trying to just live what the Buddha taught about living really without harming any other beings and who are putting the work in to do their meditation and purify their mind to live simply and help other beings to to find that real state of peace within themselves so they've been really helpful to me and they host these meditation retreats you can find out about on their website theartofmeditation.org you go away for a week in these beautiful beautiful houses out in nature and just learn about how to just like attain real states of peace and then once you've done that like it's amazing how much more productive and useful everything you do and how naturally you're just going to want to be doing you're not going to be doing things motivated by fear and competitivity and i want to be the best like it's going to be hey i just you know i'm happy already you know i just want to continue being grateful and giving back to the world rather than taking from it you know so i really hope that these green camp structures those guys will come down here and we can build them to support some of these places with comfortable green accommodation that's low impact um, and they can help continue to guide us about how to how to keep the the dharma as the central uh, part of this 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 understanding of what causes suffering and therefore understanding how to get out of suffering it's really my belief that uh, understanding that mechanism and, and how it works within oneself is the key to to really living sustainably and if we don't have an understanding of really what is the root cause of of our uh, suffering then we're not going to be able to get out of it we're only going to be kind of dealing with the symptoms rather than the root cause and what those guys are doing for me really seems to be the the sharp end of the stick at dealing with the problem yeah i hope that i can provide something that's useful to them and their retreats and I can join in more and also I can afford to feed myself and, and contribute and things with this green business model. Hopefully Bergs will be coming down to the monthly Dharma weekends. He suggested maybe that he would be able to once or twice so really hope he'll be able to join and maybe even on the yoga teacher training Bergs or someone from the art of meditation or other Dharma groups can come and help us to learn these ancient techniques, very scientific for Finding peace, literally quieting down the mind, coming super subtle. Okay, that, that's it. The Dharma we want to keep in. Okay, so those are all the sites that want green camps. Potential customers to, who want to buy a green camp and operate it with us or potential places where we could set up green camps and operate them. They're very low cost to print these structures and running a camp, even if you're charging 20 euros a night, they make a lot of money, these sites. I've done it in my forest garden before. I made a couple of grand a weekend in the domes and teepees that I still have up here at the prototype site. Okay, so now in the last section, I'm going to go through some of the questions that have been popping up in the forums and things. Some fair enough criticisms. I provide some rationale about why things are happening that way or just answer some questions. Firstly, people feel that these technologies are not very accessible. And in the case of the ro robot arm, I would agree with them. I'm daunted by the idea of learning Grasshopper. I find it, you know, it's a parametric design software that's I don't find intuitive at all. I think that working with simple XYZ gantry printers, however, is very accessible. I know six-year-olds who are operating 3D printers. If you can print on a normal printer, it's not, I mean, print a piece of A4, you can pretty much print with an XYZ gantry printer. It's not that much more difficult. So, and the cost of them, if we're getting them down to, I hope, around 10 grand, if we're doing it in bulk production, uh, maybe 15, maybe 20 grand. If, if we're getting the price down of the 3D printers and that's printing a, a panel at least every couple of hours, you know, that means you can print camps really cheaply. The structure's 400 pounds, full size. This is two meters across, right? 400 pounds, 600 pounds, about a thousand pounds for this one. The 12 sided structure that I haven't focused on now is about 2000 pounds. If you start to make them into long tunnels, they're about a thousand pounds. They can be extended as long as you like. There is nothing else on the market this cheap to produce and this green to produce. That's this durable that creates this much space. There's nothing else out there this accessible that I know of and I've worked as hard as I can to find those examples and develop something that is as green and as accessible as possible. So if you can find something that's more accessible, 
great, you know, please share it with me. Natural building, which I've, I've, I've been to natural building school and learned about building natural builds, which I think really is the zenith of green building where you take the stones and you make a dry stone wall. You take the soil and the clay and the straw and the sand and you make cob and then you use the wood to make a reciprocal roof. And out of your hands, the best 3D printers in the world, you start making your, your house, you shape your bathrooms. You use chalk to create lime that is the most like radiant and reflective substance that you could possibly build out of. They're the most elegant and sophisticated structures. They breathe. In the future, we will live as we used to. They're just such advanced, uh, advanced technologies, natural building structures. But you need building permission to get those and planning permission. That's expensive to attain and you need all kinds of building regulations. It takes a long time. And if it's very difficult to convince someone, hey, I want to come and build a natural build on your property. These mean that we can turn up and say, right, give us three years. We're going to build a green camp here run it as an Airbnb, grow a big food forest there. If they don't like it, we can leave and leave a food forest behind us, okay? We can pop the structures up somewhere else. It's very low cost to build a, a camp, 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand. We can build 60 grand camps for 100 people and I've got designs for that. For some people, if they're running a, a pub or they're running a nice restaurant, that's an affordable way to extend their capacity. Likewise, if they're running a big estate, that is also an affordable way to extend their capacity. There's even larger groups, which that doesn't really uh, come up as a blip compared to what they invest on small scale events and stuff like that. Another question that keeps coming up is how do these panels join together and these structures actually stay together? Uh, if you look on the crowdfunding video, there's actually an animation that shows you what it's like, but you can see there are these flanges on the inside and these uh, bolt together. Very simple, very nice. Uh, it just means that you can bolt them together and unbolt them. Once it's all bolted together, it's incredibly strong. This is 10% size uh, of, of the full scale one. This panel is 100% size, so they're gonna be really big. Once you bolt all these flanges together, it creates webbing, which is inherently, that's how they reinforce the carbon fiber hull of a of, of let's say the America's Cup vessels. This, this webbing creates a really strong structure that's reciprocal. People often refer to using triangular shaped panels, which is fine, you can do that, it will increase the strength. But these are already so incredibly strong that we're over-engineered for safety, uh, according to all the simulations that I have. In terms of wind loading, people are worried in warmer climates where they have hurricanes, I've been in one of our geodesic structures that was pegged into the ground in the same way that I, uh, that I wish to peg this into the ground. Well, large, deep, like uh, marquee pegs, essentially, that are bolted onto, the, onto these uh, low, lower space plates here. They have withstand 105 mile an hour snowstorms with 16 people sleeping under a very simple space heater. So I know that it's, the geometry is naturally invisible to the wind, that's why geodesics are quite special. But uh, I've also simulated 140 mile an hour winds in wind tunnel simulations, and you get about a ton of pressure on here, but that's something that the structure can spread out around itself and, and deal with. It's, it's incredibly strong, you can hang off these, um, yeah. I will, I will show you. Let me please show you with the prototypes. Some people have said it's a fake business and we're just trying to raise the money and run off with it. In which case I would completely discredit myself. I'm hoping that these monthly updates will help prove to the contrary. Furthermore, if I really wanted to raise a lot of money and make a very happy and successful life for myself, I would 3D print green camps, grow food forests, have reforestation festivals, meditation retreats with enlightened masters in beautiful locations all around the world with people who care about each other. If I wanted to be wealthy, I'd do that. You know, that's the smart thing to do if you want to be really wealthy, uh, truly wealthy. So in a way, they're kind of right. This is a big scam to get really, really wealthy, but not in the way you're thinking, in the really wealthy way. Okay, so last question I get quite a lot is people who just want to buy the structures. It says on the website, 400 pounds, 600 pounds, 1,000 pounds. I'm willing to, to do some sales of structures uh, at the beginning to try and like get the business over if I have to, but ideally, uh, that's not the business model. We've 
Sinesh has created the most detailed financial model, which has allowed us to simulate uh, sale of the, of the structures, rental of the structures, and also what I feel the business model is that I developed at Arundel Forest Garden, building cool eco structures, putting them on Airbnb and renting them out at a low cost to groups of people to come out and have fun experiences. Because the setup cost is relatively low, it means that people can come out and enjoy them at a low cost. But when you get a lot of people enjoying what's otherwise just a bit of empty forest or an empty field, then your, your, the value markup is really, really great. If we want to set up for manufacturing these, mass manufacturing them, the investment that we need to put in to the machinery is huge to actually start mass manufacturing, to sell them to garden stores, to sell them at Harrods or some of the other options that have come up. And furthermore, I want these geometries to be recognizable to the birds that are flying around, to the animals that are running around. And they can say, there's a green cap. I know those geometries. They're vegan. They're not gonna rape me and my children. I would like it that these remain property of green campus, which has a really strict vegan principle. So it means our, our goal is to do all we can to serve life and never do that which would hurt another being because all beings are united in their desire to be free from suffering and happy. The golden rule of all cultures is do unto others as one would have done unto oneself and indeed do unto, one, unto oneself as you would do unto others, most <laughs> importantly. Um, so uh, I, I, I want to keep it so that when the animals are flying over a green camp, they'll be like, it's a green camp, they're vegans. You trust me, if you're living in the woods in your forest garden and you're vegan, the, the rats will respect you when you like, have a chat with them. The, uh, I sound crazy as hell, but like animals that get hurt, barn owls are like, I've eaten a poisoned rat, I'm fucked, help me. They'll turn up, they'll literally walk up to you and just be like, please help me. Like animals learn to trust you. They'll, all the pheasants will make their nests around you to have their babies because they know that you're gonna protect them. The foxes will start to hide out with you. And these guys, the foxes is gonna eat all the rats and stuff like that. You start looking after the predators and you start looking after all of the species. The homeostasis starts to look after itself much better. Whereas if we start poisoning the rats, then we poison the barn owls, we kill, but we're in a, Furthermore, I would like to keep it that these geometries are, and similar geometries to these are recognizable by the animals. So when they're flying over above a green camp, they're like, that's a green camp. It's a vegan place. The people are vegans and they're not going to try and kill and eat us. I'm going to lay down, I'm going to go down there and make my baby pheasants. I'm going to make my baby foxes and I'm going to uh, because foxes are not vermin. The people who hunt the foxes are biologically classified as vermin. My great-grandfather published Charles Darwin's Origin of the Species and Wallace's work at the same time. He knows, that he knows what a vermin is. It's really clear, clearly classified and a fox ain't one. Someone who goes around killing them for sport is one, uh, biologically speaking. So here we're going to set an example about how kind we can be uh, to the other animals and, and to each other. And I want these geometries to be recognizable as such. So the structures are only available through a franchise model. And we're willing to get into all kinds of partnerships with other groups so that we're co-operating them. But we have really strict principles about if you want to be running the green cat, like McDonald's, right? If someone wants to run the McDonald's arches, then uh, they need to make their burgers in this way. They need to make their chips in that way. They need to do all these things so that they can be a McDonald's franchisee. And they make a whole load of money once they do things the McDonald's way, right? We're trying to do things kind of the opposite of what their product is. But still, we have a really strict franchise code book that says, okay, you know, we, we don't sell meat. Use eco-friendly toilet cleaner and on, the, on organic this and organic that and eco-friendly everything that we can needs to be supplied from local as we can suppliers and if so you're on the green campus network you our members can go and stay at a green campus and you know that just by being at a green campus you're going to be investing in something that's having a positive effect on consciousness community environment and cooperative economies so i don't just want to sell these off to anyone i want to to keep this within a regenerative business model that belongs to its members 
to you and you can join now by pre-ordering night stays or signing up as a subscriber your profile will start to accumulate all your contributions and that will be a convertible instrument which i'm allowed to issue because uh, i can't issue securities now i can't issue you shares but if i create the right for you to vote we can then have a vote and convert those votes into shares at a later date and i can issue convertible instruments right now so that's what we're doing that's our effort to create as much contribution to the regeneration of the earth and have as good a time as possible doing it. Uh, I welcome you to come and get involved. Come down and see us here. Pick up the phone. You can come and see the structures. Uh, thank you very much for all of this time I, uh, of yours. That's a huge investment as it is. Just being inside your minds and your hearts and believing in us, telling your friends. But really, we do need to raise the money to build some serious 3D printers. I'm going to be updating on the process with the Chinese printers, but we want to be building some industrial scale ones that we can mount things like this onto, print these panels quicker, print them out of our green materials, develop models for the green materials uh, production that are really local. Like this is made out of old food waste, these materials. Um, so let's try and really localize that. And then we can print whatever we want. And we can make our batteries out of the salt water. There's enough iron and stuff everywhere already for all of the electronics we need. We can live like, just literally like gods, if we just choose to and, and that make that principle don't hurt any other being. How do we provide whatever we need in as kind a way as possible? That's what we're trying to work out at Green Campus. Bit rambling, very dyslexic, but hopefully uh, you're gonna come and help us to, to hone in and, and perfect different uh, parts of it come down and just have a good time with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Good fun. See you later. See you next month. We're doing this next month. Okay, bye-bye, bye-bye. Oh, yes.